Okay, now we're going to look at how you bond elements together. There are monatomic ions, which are ions of only one atom that have a charge, and there are polyatomic ions, which are a group of atoms that take on a charge, like SO4 with a negative 2 charge, or NO3 with a negative 1 charge. Um, diatomic molecules are made up of two atoms whenever they're by themselves. There's always two of them, like H2, O2, N2, and so forth. When you look at the periodic table, I want you to know the diatomic molecules. So when you look at the periodic table, they're really easy to pick out. Let me show you where they're at on this table here. They actually form a number seven on the periodic table. Nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and everything in group seven is diatomic. So they actually form a number seven on the periodic table, plus hydrogen, which is way over here, is diatomic. So it will never be H, it will always be H2. And it will never be N, it will be N2, and so forth, when they are by themselves. Whenever you write chemical formulas, the positive element is always written first, and that's just by convention. The negative element then is written last. And the sum of the charges must be zero because all compounds are neutral. So compounds do not have a charge, and I will show you how to get those charges to equal out to zero. So how do we get the charges? Well, there's a couple things we can follow. We can follow the valence rule. And I've got four points here for the valence rule. Um, all A group metals have a positive charge equal to the group number. So for example, if I'm in group 1A and it's a metal, it's going to have a charge of plus 1. If it's a metal in group 4A, it's going to have a charge of plus 4. All the B groups metals, which are the transition metals, have a plus 2 charge except column 1B, which has a positive 1 charge. All A group nonmetals have a negative charge equal to the number of columns from the noble gases. So if I'm an A nonmetal, let's say I'm in group 6A, like oxygen or sulfur, I'm 2 away from the noble gases, so my charge would be negative 2. If I'm a nonmetal, in group 5A, I'm three away from the noble gases, so my charge would be negative three. And then finally, hydrogen is usually plus one, and it's written first, but when it's combined with a metal, it's written second, and it has a negative one charge. So when we look at the periodic table, and you want to get the charges, group 1A here, hydrogen, lithium, sodium, they're plus one. Group 2A is plus two. When you get to group 3A, remember the stair step kind of goes through here. So you have a combination in group 3A of metals and nonmetals. Metals would be a plus 3, but the nonmetal boron would be a negative 5. So you get some different charges once you get to group 3A because you have metals and nonmetals. The B groups, all these here in the middle, are plus 2, except the column 1B. Now column 1B is right here. Copper, silver, gold, those are actually plus one. But everything else in the B groups are plus two. And then your nonmetals over here, like fluorine's group is in group 7A, that's a negative one. All those in group 7A are negative one. And then you have some mixed charges in group 3 to 6A, depending on whether they're a metal or a nonmetal. So you can follow the valence rule, or you can follow the chart rule. And the chart rule works pretty much just like the valence rule. Metals are positive. So anytime you're in group 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, if it's a metal, it's going to have a positive charge. Now when you get to group 3A, 4A, 5A, you'll notice there's a choice, and that depends whether you're a metal or a nonmetal. So the chart rule works for the A groups, and, but again the B groups are all plus 2 except for column 1B. So here's what we do when we right neutral compounds. Let's say I want to put sodium with bromine and I want to figure out what the neutral compound is for sodium with bromine. First thing you need to do is get the charge. So you find sodium on the periodic table and sodium is in group 1A so it's got a charge of positive 1. And bromine is in group 7A and it's a nonmetal so that means it's negative and it's in 7A so it's negative 1. To write a neutral compound the easy way is just to cross charges. So the positive comes down as a subscript behind bromine, and the negative comes as a subscript behind sodium. We just get rid of the negative sign. And so we have Na1Br1. And we can just actually leave out the ones and just write NaBr. So that's the neutral compound.
for sodium with bromine. Here's a couple more examples. Let's say I want to put calcium with sulfur. We need to get their charges from the periodic table. Calcium is in group 2A. So write its charge, plus 2. Sulfur is in group 6A, which is 2 away from the noble gases. We're going to cross charges. So you get Ca2S2. But if you can reduce those, go ahead and reduce them. So the balanced formula between calcium and sulfur is just CAS. And that compound is neutral because all compounds are neutral. Say I want to put silver with phosphorus. Silver is in the B groups, but it's in column 1B. So that means it has a charge of positive 1. Phosphorus is in group 5A, 3 away from the noble gases. Cross charges. The balanced formula, AG3P. Do one more here with a polyatomic ion. Say I want to put tin with PO4, which is called phosphate. I'll tell you the charge on PO4 is a minus 3. Tin is a metal, and it's in group 4A. Metals are always positive, so positive 4. I'm going to cross charges just like before. So there's a 3 behind 10, and there's a 4 behind PO4. And since it's a polyatomic ion, I'm going to write that in parentheses and put the 4 outside. So SN3, PO4, 4. Some metals in the B groups can have more than one common oxidation state or one common charge. And these are the six metals that can have more than one charge. And you will know the charge because I will say, for example, if I want to put copper with oxygen, I will tell you what the charge on copper is because there's a copper 1 and there's a copper 2. So let's say I want to put copper 1 with oxygen and I want to write a balanced formula. Copper 1 has a charge of plus 1. And oxygen has a charge, it's in group 6A, of negative 2. So if I put these two together, copper 1 and oxygen, that's my compound. However, copper can also be a positive 2 charge. So if I put that with oxygen, with a positive 2, and oxygen with a negative 2, those cancel out and my formula is just CuO. So if you see one of these six metals, copper, iron, mercury, lead, tin, or chromium, you will have the charge indicated in Roman numerals to tell you what the oxidation state is.